Hi, lovers of Yoruba language. I know you have been wondering how you can build your Yoruba vocabulary. Perhaps you have also been wondering how you can form your own Yoruba sentence. This video is an opportunity for you to build your own Yoruba sentence from the scratch. Now, let's get started. Like most languages, the Yoruba language structure contains three basic elements. These are the subject, the verb, and the object. The subject comes before the verb, and the object comes after the verb. However, unlike in English and most Latin languages, verbs are not conjugated in Yoruba language irrespective of the subject or tense. Instead, auxiliary words are added to indicate subject or tense. Similarly, Yoruba language is a tonal language. Almost words have diacritic marks which help to differentiate homonyms. Watch out for a video on how to use tonal or diacritic signs to correctly pronounce Yoruba words. Now, let's get to an example to show how to construct basic Yoruba sentence. Consider the sentence, I eat banana. I eat banana. In Yoruba, this sentence will be written or said as Moje Ogede. Moje or gede. Ye. The subject I is mo in Yoruba. Mo. The verb eat is je. Je. And the object banana is o gede. Oh, get there. Like I said earlier, it is very important to understand how to use tonal signs to be able to pronounce Yoruba words correctly. Once again, watch out for a video on how to use tonal signs to pronounce Yoruba words correctly. Now, let's dive deeper. Let's consider the same sentence I eat banana which is moje or gede. If we are to replace the pronoun I with the third person pronoun E, it becomes oje or gede. Oje or gede. Eat banana becomes oje or gede. Ye, o is the Yoruba word for e or she. Clearly, we can see that irrespective of the change to the subject, the verb je does not change. Let's go further and consider you eat banana. That becomes oje or gede. Oje or gede. This should not be mistaken with the first sentence, which is oje or gede. E is O in Yoruba, while U is O. E is O in Yoruba, while U is O. Though they are the same word, but we can differentiate between them using the tonal or that critic sign. I'll watch out for a video on that later. Now let's consider the plural form of the pronoun U and have the statement, you eat banana. That would be, eje or gede. Eje or gede. And lastly, the eat banana would be, mwaje or gede. Mwaje or gede. The bottom line here is that, the verb does not change, with a change in the subject. Similarly, 
the main verb does not change irrespective of the time of action or event in Yoruba sentences. Instead, auxiliary words are used to indicate the time of event. Let's consider the sentence, I ate banana. I ate banana or I have eaten banana. This is a past event and this will be multi j or gede. Multi j or gede. We can see that the verb j is still the same. To show that the event takes place in the past, the auxiliary t is used. He ate banana or he has eaten banana would then be written as OTJ or GEDE. OTJ or GEDE. You ate banana or you have eaten banana would be ATJ or GEDE. ATJ or GEDE. Why they have eaten banana or they eat banana would be one TJ or GEDE. One TJ or GEDE. Now let's consider the event in future sense. I will eat banana is Moma J or GEDE. Moma J or GEDE. EA. The auxiliary word ma is being used to show that the event will take place in the future. If we eat banana is oma j or gede. You will eat banana is ema j or gede. Why do we eat banana is oma j or gede. In the same vein, the auxiliary word mm is used to indicate future events. For example, the sentence I am eating banana is Munje Ogede in Yoruba. Munje Ogede. Ie, the auxiliary un is being used to indicate that the event is continuous. He was eating banana is Onje Ogede. Onje or gede. You are eating banana is Onje or gede. Onje or gede. However, whenever the continuous event is taking place in the future, the auxiliary ma will be used. Therefore, they will be eating banana is Onje or gede. One my J or Gede. The bottom line here is that irrespective of the time of event, the main verb is unchanged. Instead, auxiliary words are used to indicate the time or tense of event. Now, shall we consider further examples that follow this pattern? Adi drum beer is Adi Timu Otilili. Adi Timu Otilili. Ie, the verb drink is Mu. While beer is Otilili. The auxiliary T is used to indicate that the event took place in the past. He will drink soda is Oma Mu Oti Eleri Dodo. Oma Mu Oti Eleri Dodo. Soda is Oti Eleri Dodo in Yoruba. And the auxiliary Ma is being used to indicate that the event is taking place in the future. Similarly, the student who are drinking water is I want a keko na mu omi. I want a keko na mu omi. 
the auxiliary um is being used to indicate that the event is ongoing. Now, I have an exercise for you. You can pause the video, complete the exercise, and provide feedbacks or ask questions in the comment section. You may as well skip this section and continue the video and come back to this later. But make sure you complete the exercise as it will help you to learn how to construct your own sentence de novo. Now, let's move on and try to consider other examples. Like in English, adjectives are used to modify nouns in Yoruba language. However, unlike in English, the adjective comes after the noun it modifies in Yoruba. Let's consider the sentence. I eat three bananas. I eat three bananas. It becomes muje ogede meta in Yoruba. Muje ogede meta. Here, the subject I is mo. The verb eat is je. The object banana is ogede. Why the adjective that is modifying the object banana, which is three in this case, is meta in Yoruba. As you can see, the adjective comes after the noun it modifies, which is banana in this case. So meta, which is three, is modifying ogere, which is banana. Let's consider for the example. The rich man has a big house. Is okunri oluwo na ni ile unla. Okunri oluwo na ni ile unla. As you can see from here, the adjective. Big is modifying house, and in Yoruba, big is unla, and is modifying the object ile, ile unla, big house. Let's go further and consider additional example. The white dog is playing with the black cat. Here we have the adjective for both the subject and the object. And that will be Aja Fun Seri Pelu Ulubo Dudu. Aja Fun Fun Seri Pelu Ulubo Dudu. Here the dog is Aja. The white, which is the modifying word, is Fun Fun. The white dog, Aja Fufu. Unsere is playing with the black cat. Pelu Ulubo Dudu. With is Pelu in Yoruba. Why the cat is Ulubo? The black is Dudu. So the white dog is playing with the black cat is Aja Fufu. Sere Pelu Ulubo Dudu. Also, let's consider the effect of preposition in Yoruba language structure. In Yoruba language, preposition goes before the noun it affects. For example, consider this sentence. I eat banana in school. I eat banana in school. The present position in is affecting the word school. And in Yoruba, that will be Moje Ogede Ni Lewe. Moje Ogede Ni Lewe. 
the subject I is mo. The verb eat is je. The object banana is ogede. The preposition in is me in Yoruba. Why the noun that is being modified is ilewe, which is cool. Let's consider similar examples. The farmer goes to farm. Agbeno lo si oko. Agbeno lo si oko. Here, the preposition to is si in Yoruba. Agbe is farmer. No, is the law is the verb go. Why oko is farm. Finally, I have another exercise for you. In this exercise, I have provided list of verbs in Yoruba, and I would like you to make your own new sentences using each of these verbs. I will try to pronounce each of the verb to you and I will admonish you to pronounce the verb after me. It is J. J. Drink is M. M. Sleep. Sun. Sun. Go. Lo. Lo. Come. Bo. Bo. Wa can be used if you are commanding. For example, come will be wa. Sing. Corin, Corin, dance, Joe, Joe, cried, son con, son con, laugh, rarely, rarely. Play. Siri. Siri. Rise. Didi. Didi. Stand. Naru. Naru. Sit. Joko. Joko. Jump. Full. Full. Right. Call. Call. Draw. Yeah. Yeah. Can't. Ka. Ka. Take. Ba. Ba. Drive. Wa. Wa. Ride. Gun. Gun. Love. Fe. Fe. Like. Feran. Feran. Ie. Bo. Bo. 
C. Oui. Oui. Look. Wo. Wo. Smell. Run. Run. Taste. Tawu. Tawu. Lie. Puro. Puro. Shout. Pariwu. Pariwu. Bark. Bo. Bo. So thank you for staying with me to this point. This will be the end of this video. So if you have comments or you have doubts about making your own sentence in Yoruba, go ahead and drop a message for me in the comment section and I will be available to provide guidance on how to construct your own new sentence in Yoruba. I want to see you write and speak Yoruba with confidence. So let's do it. Thank you and see you later.